This is a CNA podcast. Now, Singapore Today with Lance Alexander and Melanie Oliveira. If you're an HR professional or a sales manager, even a real estate agent, would you use artificial intelligence or AI software to help you interact better with clients, customers, or even people you're hiring? Well, this AI tool would assist you with people reading skills, using advanced technologies like facial recognition features, as well as text analysis. Well, the aim is to help you become a better communicator and build more trust between companies, clients and other stakeholders. So we're talking about this AI tool. It's called Mind Reader, hailed as Singapore's first AI-powered personality profiler. So let's talk to its co-founder, Ethan Lin. Hey, Ethan, welcome to Singapore Today. Before we talk about what makes Mind Reader tick, can you tell us first how you got the idea for it? Because we know that you were in sales and you founded your own training company, but what was the exact catalyst that started it all? Hey, hey thanks for having me. Uh, so um, 10 years ago, I was really fascinated by the idea of personality type, right? To understand myself and to understand others as well. And I particularly realized it after uh, actually sharing it with colleagues. I was looking on a website and I found, found out about personality type. And like many people, I was fascinated by it. But I realized that my colleagues were still talking about it after two weeks. So I thought, hey, maybe I could make a business out of this. And so I really started the deep diving into personality type. I got certified and uh, I even wrote up to 200 articles on type. And at its peak, my website had over 100,000 visitors uh, a, a month coming in. So when I started my training company, it was actually for couples, right? Both for couples to help them understand each other better, both married couples and attached couples through better communication. But I, at some point, I pivoted to actually support uh, salespeople because they actually needed to know how to communicate better with their clients. So one of the key premises is that in order to communicate well, we actually have to know the profile or the personality profile of the person we're speaking with. And so in order to empower salespeople with that, in 2020, we actually conceived this idea of building out Mind Reader, which is an AI tool to help salespeople to do exactly that, to enhance human-to-human uh, -human communication. Yeah. Ethan, maybe you can help us by taking us through a step-by-step process or way of understanding how this platform works. Let's say a new electronic startup wants to sell more of its products and they book the services of an AI tool like MindReader. What happens next? Oh, yeah. Thanks for the question. So firstly, um, MindReader was actually built for high stakes, high ticket, one-to-one -one communication scenarios. Like, for example, if you're pitching a proposal to your boss or to a client, or let's say you're selling an investment idea uh, to a big client or doing insurance or even real estate, they're all relevant here. But it's actually very easy to use. It's actually a live website called themindreader.ai. And all you need to do is to simply upload a picture of that person or some text that the person uses on social media. And then the AI actually predicts the best way for you to put across your proposal so that you are persuasive, you're convincing, you are able to effectively bridge the communication gap. So it's a very simple, a simple way of doing it. Uh, it's just a, all you need is a picture or a text. That's all you need to be able to understand this person. But it doesn't really work, let's say, on a retail situation where you don't actually have any prior knowledge of the people they are walking in. Yeah. Or let's say this electronic startup wants to have more of their products sold, uh, not so much online, but at a, a mass retailer in Singapore. So yeah. they can load the picture of the overall guy in charge of sales at this partner shop that they want to link up with. That could help, right? Exactly. Right. So in this kind of cases where you are actually doing a B2B uh, communication scenarios, you are there to influence one person to make a big decision. That's where my reader really comes in because then you can to do some prior research, right? You get to read up about this guy, which is what we all do, right? We'll probably read up about LinkedIn, learn a bit about our client. And then that's where my reader comes in. You just upload a face, upload some text that a person uses. And then my reader tells you, okay, here's how you should pitch your proposal to be more convincing, to be more persuasive. Uh, that's where uh, I think that my reader is the most useful. Yeah. Okay, so then how many text and image data points? Because you mentioned uh, pictures of people, image data points of different personality types does this AI tool have now? 
And where does all this data come from? Because people are now thinking about privacy, you know, how whose face is inside. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a that's a common challenge people uh, do have. I think, but I think you know we all upload our our lives on social media pretty much. We don't question what Facebook does. We don't question what LinkedIn does uh, with the data that we use. We we're happy to give it away, right? But how this data is found, how this text is found, is simple. We simply uh, look at 2,000 text data points which people publicly post online. So if you are posting online, it's public domain, it's actually usable by anyone. Uh, and it's over 60,000 face data points. It's actually not facial recognition. We don't actually recognize the faces. We actually use computer vision, which simply looks at uh, how the face is uh, positioned. So it doesn't actually tell you who that person is. So the data is actually being constantly added to and grown. Uh, so how this data is comes about is because I've been doing corporate training for over a decade, right? And so this data both comes from people that have trained, right? As well as people who have self-declared their personality type on the internet, whether it's celebrities, whether it's people who have self-declared, oh, I'm this personality type and so on and so forth. So it's actually, uh, the data is both available through my own domain expertise, but as well as available online on the internet as well. So together, all these data comes together to form what you call the LLM or the large language model uh, that is essentially trains the AI to learn uh, how to distinguish one face from another in the sense of a uh, distinguished personality type, you would say. Hey, Ethan, well, there come a point where you don't even need then a go-between. The mind reader becomes the contact that we interact with. Um, of course, I think uh, uh, that's not the point of the mind reader, right? The point of the mind reader is not to, let's say, uh, uh, to replace someone. Uh, in, in a sense, what it wants to do is enhance the human-to-human -human communication. So what MindReader currently does is actually just to recommend to you how you should best communicate with this person. But you have, you're onto something there actually, Lance, that um, eventually we could have a future where a chatbot uh, actually learns about you as you speak to it. So it's actually quite an ex I don't know whether you say it's exciting or scary, but this is actually a possibility because if the chatbot can learn about you as you speak to it, it can actually become more human-like in its response as well. So that's what you call, in a sense, unsupervised learning. It's actually learning as uh, as you are talking to it as well. So yes, that's a possibility, Lance. Yeah. Can I load Lance's face on this website <laughs> and see yeah. if uh, the personality profile it tells me about him matches what I interact with every day, the person I interact with every day? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, oh, wow. You can actually do that. You can go to the mindreader.ai to do it right now. It's a freemium thing. So you can just log on, add your email in, and you can just immediately go analyze the face. So um, what, what it will tell you is certain aspects of Lance's personality. It doesn't tell you everything about Lance, of course. It's just a few aspects of how he likely likes to be, uh, how he prefers to be communicated with. Uh, so it's it's a it, we are you know it's something that's very fascinating because even for myself I'm thinking like is this even possible? Mm. But as we teach the AI, as we train the AI, we, we are finding that they actually can learn things in ways that we don't even understand. So you can go ahead and try it, and you can let us <laughs> let me know. How it is. Yeah, let me know as well, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you all the what what AI thinks of Lance. Yeah, that, that means you've tested it on yourself, Ethan. You've you've I'm assuming you've you've loaded your face onto your own AI to see if it's right. I mean, of course, I mean, mm. I, I'm using the tool, right? I mean, it's yeah. not just myself. I've actually, we've actually done many rounds of testing with it. Like how do we, how are we confident enough to roll out the, the software? It's because we have done some level of testing. So we teach the computer a lot of faces, but ultimately we have to bring it out to the test. It's kind of like when you bring uh, you, you bring your kid to do a lot of 10 year series, eventually the kid has to take the exam. So the AI has to be tested ultimately, right? So right now it's doing about 70 to 80% accuracy in terms of faces. So we are confident enough to roll it out. It's not perfect yet. So there are sometimes we make it's not accurate, but I think uh, as with AI, it's always learning, it's always getting smarter. So we are confident it will become better over time. Okay, yeah, because you said that sometimes it may not be accurate. So let's talk about mm -hmm. human biases that exist when you profile people for a job yeah. or when profiling customers who walk into a store. What are these biases that MindReader doesn't inherently have? That is a great point, Lance. Uh, so I think most of the misconception with personality type, not even with AI, is that 
people think that AI uh, personality type predicts things that it actually doesn't, right? Most people think like personality type predicts behavior. It actually doesn't. It actually studies motivation and preferences. So I give an example. Like if I ask if you like chicken rice more or check with Dale, and maybe you say chicken rice, it doesn't mean that I predict you're going to eat chicken rice today. It just means that overall, over a long period of time, you are more likely to eat chicken rice and chuck with you, right? So firstly, understanding your uh, personality type is just your communication preferences as how you prefer to be spoken to, right? It doesn't mean that I would know about your intelligence, your affluence, your character, your destiny, your mental state, none of those things, right? So it, in a sense, the AI doesn't really have the bias that we have because our biases tend to be come from our upbringing, our culture, our understanding of the world, our perceptions, right? But AI, it's... It's like a blank sheet, right? All I'm telling the AI is this person is this type, this person is this type. And then you give it a lot of it, and then it just figures out oh, likely this person is. So it doesn't come with that biases that humans, we naturally do have based on our, all of our bringing and influences. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mind Reader has been, and congratulations, being used by big brands like insurance companies and banks. So, But the thing is that what improvements have they, your clients, suggested uh, seeing how they've used your platform quite extensively? Yeah. So I think one of the, the things is that our company is primarily an AI development company, right? So the, many of the uh, the challenges that maybe the, the clients have raised up, it's usually more around uh, more around like the user um, user friendliness of the tool itself. Because typically many of these big brands have a workflow already. They have a certain way of uh, engaging their clients. So really what we are, our challenge is how do we make it uh, usable or what is it commercializable? Um, but some of them have even suggested a few more things that you could do like uh, profiling video recordings or even voice recordings. I know you're going to bring up the privacy issue things, which is one of the reasons why we haven't pursued it. But uh, these are some of the things that clients have asked us. But um, it can be quite, I don't know, exciting, scary at the same time if you want to move, walk, walk in the direction. Yeah. We know this is the future. So we also know that Mind Reader for now is not 100% accurate. So as to what extent could we apply this age-old phrase, never judge a book by its cover to Mind Reader? So I think... Um, so what Mind Reader doesn't do is that it, it doesn't judge a person in the way that we judge a person. It, it simply tells me how this person wants to be communicated with, or how this person likes to be communicated. So if you really think about it, right, what I'm telling you is to adjust your style to fit a person, to adjust your style, or at least be more sensitive to the person you're speaking with. So if anything, it's actually teaching a person to be less judgmental and to be more open to listen to a person. It, it's actually... Communic communication is a, you know, profiling is a two-edged sword, right? You can use it to try to box people into something or you can use it to understand yourself and the way you communicate so that you can learn to engage others better. And that's the spirit of what I want to do and what I've always been doing um, is to, is not to judge, but to learn to um, change, or not, not change, but learn to adjust your way so that others can understand you better. And now we're looking at it expanding elsewhere. How else can Mind Reader be used to help us find the perfect romantic partner <laughs> or really at the school level, exam for example, right, uh, Ethan, during the, for schools to use it during the direct school admission or DSA for secondary schools during those interview rounds? I think, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, Mind Reader is created for a specific purpose, right? High stakes one-to-one -one encounter with little prior contact. And for the reason, it does actually have a potential for dating, um, like, let's say you're meeting this guy for the first time or this lady for the first time and you really want to make that date work, right? That's where Mind Reader can come. And in fact, uh, a dating application is in the works. But uh, for school admission, job hires, there are actually much better tools out there, much better psychometric profiling tools that already exist that I think that Mind Reader doesn't want to go there, right? We don't want to go there because there's enough interaction with the interviewer and interviewee such that this tool is not necessary entirely. Right, but actually the potential for this tech is actually quite crazy because we have only begun to scratch the surface. And uh, imagine a future where you could walk past a camera and it could potentially show you an ad relevant to you in your preferred style, in your preferred language, you would say. It's, it's like a minority report future. There's a potential for that, but um, it's, we are still early. We're still really early. Yeah, yeah, we're still early into this whole AI general adoption worldwide thing. And that's why, because we're kind of new to this, we didn't co-found or create this. So what job roles do you need to keep 
mind reader relevant. We're just giving an example. Do you need prompt engineers for this to work in its next phase? Yeah, that, that's a that's a good, good question. Um, currently, we don't really need uh, prompt engineers. We are primarily an AI development company. Uh, our core focus and hires tend to revolve around software engineers and developers. Currently, I'm a, a domain expert in, uh, in Myers-Briggs as well as uh, what you call this temperament sorter, but we're also seeking out other domain experts in the fields of communication, negotiations, uh, sales influence, and all that, and they can actually teach the AI. So in the end, what you're going to have is a combination of all these intelligences in one uh, computer, and that's where it's going to be uh, a really smart one and smarter than all of us. So really what we need right now is domain experts, software engineers, developers, um, from engineers not so much, but uh, eventually we, we, get, we might get there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only a web-based uh, platform. Is, is, is it uh, available on our phones as an app? Oh, so uh, currently not. Uh, it's actually a, a web app at the moment. We're going to build a Chrome extension for it actually soon. Uh, and we are going to build a mobile eventually, but because we have not built it because we wanted to test it first and make sure what you call an MVP. We want to make sure that people actually want to use it and people actually found it helpful. And that's when we begin, we'll begin development into a mobile app that people can have it in their pockets every day. Yeah. Okay, that's where your other software engineers come in as well. <laughs> Ethan, thank yeah. you for being with us on Singapore Today. Ethan Lin is the co-founder of Mind Reader, hailed as Singapore's first AI-powered personality profiler. Check them out at www.themindreader.ai. 